How long have you been listening to scanners? So I got my amateur radio license when I was 15, so it's been about 25 years off and on. Why do you enjoy listening to scanner traffic? I like knowing what's going on around me. I like knowing what's going on in, um, in my neighborhood. I have a lot of neighbors that have actually asked me, like if they see a, a police car, or fire truck, or anything like that, they come to me and you know see if I know what's going on. Um, it gives me a sense of safety to kind of know like what's happening in my neighborhood. I love hearing firefighters, police officers working. I like knowing what the job is all about and, and hearing them throughout the day. I think there's some very good professionalism and camaraderie that uh, I think is good for, for the community to hear. Why is encrypting of law enforcement channels a bad idea? There's a lot of reasons why I don't think it's a great idea. The biggest reason I think people will, will talk about is transparency. When I think of transparency, there's there's kind of two ways to think about it. There's sort of transparency in the negative sense. Like if we want to know, say a police officer may do something wrong, people want to know about that. And I understand that. I think there's, there's definitely a, a need for accountability. But I also think it goes the other way. I think transparency is a good thing. I think it's great for the community to know what the job entails, the good things that happen, uh, how professional law enforcement is, being able to listen to dispatchers, which, which never really get to see the limelight. So I think, I think for one, you know, it's a, it's a bad idea because you lose that sense of, of transparency in, in a positive, positive way. There's a lot of logistical problems with encryption that you don't really see from the very beginning. It's gonna be a very complex system that they're gonna have to keep running. Uh, when it comes to encryption keys, when it comes to maintaining a fleet of radios, encryption becomes a very daunting task and that's gonna happen quickly. I think the effects of that are gonna be financial, they're gonna be logistical. But I think overall, I don't think it's a good idea because the community should be able to, to listen to what law enforcement officers are doing and to participate and be a part of it. What suggestions would you have for Cressa? I, th I think Cressa, they're doing a great job. Um, they got a lot of community involvement, which I think is awesome. I think part of that community involvement should probably include the idea that that people like listening to them. They, a lot of people have actually gotten to know the voices of dispatchers. Listening to a scanner, for me personally, it's it's actually made me feel more comfortable to call in. Um, I've called in a couple times for traffic accidents and I'll hear a voice that I recognize. I, I, I think for them, it's important to, to realize that there's a large community out there, Facebook groups, uh, just scanner hobbyists, that like that sense of openness and, and want to hear them do their job. So definitely part of the, the public relations for Cressa would, I, I think it would be, it would be good for them to kind of talk about what open channels mean for dispatchers and, and how that kind of helps them kind of put themselves in the public eye, which, which is a good thing. I think Cressa has a, has a very good understanding of encryption. Um, I think law enforcement sees it as a wonderful tool. I don't know if law enforcement understands the management of encryption. I'm guessing Cressa probably has a full understanding of it. I think getting that sort of together and letting the public know, okay, yes, we have a plan in place. Uh, this is how we're gonna work with Portland. This is how we're gonna work with WSP. This is how encryption isn't going to affect uh, interoperability. Giving that sense of security to people, I, I think would be great.